All right, so welcome to 15 Minutes in the Forest. Uh, today I've got a resource expert with me, Sarah Peltier, and Sarah is a biologist with Department of Wildlife Resources. And so I've asked Sarah to kind of help me out today um, and answer the question as why does habitat matter as far as edge goes? So really, why does edge habitat matter, Sarah, in your opinion? Yeah, it's a great question, Jason. And um, edge habitat is really important for wildlife because it acts as a transition zone from two different habitat types. And so wildlife are using this as they move across habitats. And these, these edge habitats provide not only forage for wildlife, but also important cover as they move and transition from one habitat to the next. So we're going to walk up here and look at this edge. You can see from my video, we've got some, some loblolly pine here and some Virginia pine and cedar mix. But there's something going on this edge that we want to talk about. So I've asked Sarah to kind of point out why this edge may not be so beneficial to uh, wildlife, particularly ground nesting uh, birds and upland game. Exactly. So behind me is a great example of what we call hard edge. And so there's a transition from a you know, mature forest stand here to what is essentially bare ground or just grass. And so this is a hard edge. And as wildlife are moving from that habitat type to this one, there is very little to no cover providing protection for various wildlife, particularly some of our game birds like wild turkey or quail. They really like to have cover and herbaceous growth and shrubs and thickets from one habitat type to the next that provides that transition zone where they feel safe and comfortable before moving out onto more open bare ground or a field. But there's something different going on here on this edge, Sarah. So tell us about this area. Yeah, so behind me here is a good example of what we would call soft edge. So we actually have a transition zone between two habitat types from this mature hardwood stand behind us before we come into this open field with grasses. So there's a hedgerow, if you will, that's acting as this edge, this soft edge. And so as wildlife are moving from the forest to the field, they have this transitional zone where they can pause, they can forage. Oftentimes there's good food in these hedgerows, uh, but it also is providing that necessary cover from any predator species as they move into a more open, vulnerable landscape. Uh, and so this is acting as really good soft edge for those animals. So Sarah, if we were a landowner and we wanted to create more edge, what are some options that we would you know, have available to us and how we would go about doing that? Absolutely, yeah. So if you uh, were interested in managing for wildlife, maybe uh, various species on your property and you, you had an absence of soft edge, maybe you had more hard edge and you wanted to create this, uh, a couple different ways you could do it. So if you have your field up against a forest and the hard edge example that we showed you, um, you could cut further into that um, forest and remove some of the timber and then allow succession to occur so that you have more of a soft edge growing. Uh, similarly, in your existing field, uh, you can allow that field to get a little bit smaller by creating a zone, an edge zone, where you allow succession to occur. So you're going to let some of the understory grow and get taller so that you have a, a pretty decent understory, a, a tier if you will where that is that edge and transition from one habitat to another. So sometimes you can even go as far as planting. So if you cut your timber um, into the forest a little bit, you may come back and plant maybe some soft mass producing trees, maybe some hard mass trees to create the edge. Or like I said, you could just allow the um, field to grow up on that transition zone up against the forest and allow those thickets, these hedgerows to come up. Great, thank you, Sarah opening up sunlight to the floor such as on the edge of this mature hardwood track will allow for new growth and early successional species to soften this edge so uh, there's a right of way here a uh, power line and a logging job is being set up so this can lead itself to providing edge habitat even if it's not intentional so logging practices often provide uh, a lot of suitable habitat for wildlife that need edge habitat such as songbirds, 
uh, turkey, quail, and these areas they will come out in and do their bugging, as they will call it, uh, with their poults uh, and the, the young chicks when they hatch, which will be about 85% of their diet, their first uh, eight weeks of life. This meadow provides a nice place for wildlife to roam and graze and feed, but this also has a recreation area, this frisbee golf disc golf course. And so we have another example of a hard edge here in public areas and recreation as a need and a goal. And that is priority here in this public site. But the edge here, as we were talking about earlier, is very abrupt and there's a stream right here on the edge of this opening which is great for wildlife. It's still a, a corridor, travel corridor, probably mostly at night because this gets visited by a lot of people. And on up this edge you can see some shrubbery along the edge here. But again, this is a public area and the goal here is, is safety and access and that's why it's so clean. So it's nice to the human eye, but for wildlife this is not very good. We've got a lot of fescue out here. It's mowed. A lot, of, a lot of diversity. So I'm stopping by up here at White Oak Mountain Wildlife Management Area, uh, maintained by Department of Wildlife Resources. And they've got their gazebo booth here set up uh, with the rules and regulations for participation on the property. The reason I've got this orange on is not because legally you have to have orange this time of year, but spring turkey season is in. And uh, I'll be walking around, hopefully doing a little bit of videoing, uh, trying to be non-intrusive in case there are hunters, because it is a public area, so trying to be safe. And we're going to take a look at some of the edge habitat here to better define, at least from the game department standpoint, uh, how edge habitat benefits wildlife and why it's important. And this will hopefully build on what Sarah shared a little bit earlier. All right, so here we've got a... A good example of a soft edge so you see the hardwoods the mature hardwoods in the background so unlike what we saw earlier where there was uh, you know grass right up to the trees just about you can see these early successional plants here in south side which is uh, consist of uh, some volunteer loblolly sweet gum a lot of blackberry and brambles when we're talking about why edge is important it really provides protection it also provides a nesting cover and what we call escape cover. A lot of people forget about that. They think about nesting cover, uh, they think about food, they think about water, um, even roosting cover, but they don't think about escape cover a lot of times. We miss that one. So if you peep over in here, you can see the blackberries and the brambles as I move up in here. You can see the white blooms on them. Uh, this is excellent escape cover. Uh, where young quail or, or, or songbirds, turkey, can, can fly in and get away from aerial predators like hawks, uh, eagles, bald eagles in this area, uh, and even owls. Uh, owls do hunt during the day, unbeknownst to a lot of people. Uh, great horned owls you won't see out in the daytime as much, but barred owls, barred owls, and even screech owls for sure. And so this area has been put into kind of a pine savanna. You can see that they've disked this edge, which was obviously a fire line at the time, but just this disking uh, generates a lot of new forbs and stuff in the seed bank to come up for wildlife. So disking on an edge, like in this case, doing down this, this pathway, this fire line, is another type of edge habitat. And then the understory of these pines are just great areas for wildlife, birds. Some critters you might not like would be in there as well. <laughs> Snakes and ticks. Um, but this area has been maintained by fire where at some point trees are going to take this over if it's not maintained. So about every three years you're going to have to either burn or, or bush hog, do something mechanical or even spray if you, you went that route. Uh, herbicide uh, to keep this in an early successional stage and maintain this edge and so see just a beautiful area uh, that's been dissed and sowed here on this edge and a great place for wildlife to thrive and feed and and tuck back into the woods of course many wildlife management areas have this 
you know the autumn olive it's very common white underside on the leaf green on top I can hear the pollinators just buzzing right here right now on this edge so there's lots of benefits other than just for wildlife game and non-game species but pollinators as well we use these edges and the blooms from the the plants that are there so again another good example of that graduation tall timber in the back we've got a thick edge coming out into a, an open field that's actually planted so we're here at a site today at a quail uh, forever tour in Halifax County Virginia and we've got some folks that are leaving the tour we wrapped up uh, the owner has shown us some of his management uh, activities he's done here with this this burn um, and we're getting a real good flush growth of new forbs and blackberries and brambles and I got with me uh, Mark Puckett with Department of Wildlife Resources. Mark is our state small game biologist, good friend of mine, and has been very uh, helpful and instrumental in getting quail, uh, in my opinion, restored in South South Virginia and other parts of the state through groups like Quail Forever. Well, uh, what's behind me here is the type of cover you'll hear people talk about wanting to bush hog down or get rid of, and I can't stress how important and how critical this type of habitat is, whether it be on an edge or even out in a hedgerow. It's a transition zone between a mature woodland and a more open habitat. There are so many wildlife species that use this type of cover that maybe don't use the mature woods or don't use the open areas as much. Uh, this habitat is good for pollinators, it's good for shrubland songbirds, it's good for rabbits, uh, quail love this type of cover. I could go on and on and on about it, but rather than clean this up, this is the kind of thing you need to promote because that transition zone from those mature woods to those open areas and that increase in habitat diversity is critical to your wildlife population. So talk to us, we'll come and look at your property. We'll talk to you about how to create this kind of cover and how to maintain it because it does take a little work to maintain it. But again, uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder. Some people look at this and think it's a weedy mess. Uh, animals look at it and think of it as home. This is home for them. This is safety for them, my food for them. So there's so many reasons. Uh, and just, just realize uh, ugly to us is not ugly to wildlife. And uh, that, it's great cover. Good. Thank you, Mark. And so one question, one of the comments today was, you know, the size of, of that edge. A lot of people are using you know a linear long strip but sometimes you just got to use what you have and try to enhance it uh but but size does matter what what is a general rule you'd want that width to be to make it worthwhile for the wildlife yeah that that's a great question and i talk to landowners and they're very well meaning uh, they'll say i'm going to leave 10 or 15 feet of edge and that may be better than nothing but the truth is 30 35 feet is what i consider to be a minimum that's the minimum under most of your uh, incentives programs and if you can make it wider it's even better if you can bring it out 50 or 100 feet it becomes much more of a habitat and much less of a potential trap for animals so, so i guess the more the merrier up to the point where you uh where, where you can afford to do it uh, how much of your crop field can you give up how much of your edge can you give up to wildlife habitat but the more the merrier and again, 30, 35 feet is a minimum. And Mark, thank you for being with me today. And uh, we appreciate what you and your team have done and continue to do. We're very grateful and thankful for your service and for the time and dedication, having a having a, a knack for it, uh, truly a calling for what you do. And, and that's uh, so important uh, to landowners today that are looking at options for their property. And wildlife tends to be way up there. And uh we're thankful to have y'all as a resource in that. So thank you. Well, thank y'all as well. Thanks for watching 15 Minutes in the Forest. Stay tuned for the next episode coming up in two weeks. Hope you have a great rest of spring and summer.